some of the hard critical hearts that are critical of emotional worship, it's probably because God hasn't brought you through the deep waters because it changes how you worship. You're, you're a little excited. I'm just amazed that men can act like animals at a sports event, but in church. Uh, the problem is they haven't experienced God. Now, you don't have to act weird. We're not a circus. We're not a circus environment. But we are not a cemetery. We are here to worship the living God. And when God changes your heart, when God changes your heart, you're excited about that. I just at the stadium last night, there was an 86-year-old woman who came and she was on a walker. And she said, I just, I want to give my life to the Lord. I'm like, right now? Right, I, it caught me off guard. And she told the prayer team the same thing. And another lady was crying, got baptized, came back to the Lord. Uh, another man uh, gave, gave me a hug. You don't know who these people are, so we have, you know, be careful. But uh, he's, he's hugging me. He said he's been four months clean of uh, freebasing crystal myth. And because, because of the, because of the, uh, now I know many of you don't know what that is, but it's, it's uh, not good. You're heating up you're heating up crystal meth and injecting it or smoking it. It's, it's very deadly and, and hard to break that addiction. He's been set free. And so what God is doing, you, you might, they might be a little excited, right? Those people might worship a little different than you. You might see them getting a little, a little emotional. You might see them at the altar being humbled before God because God has set them free. When you experience the living God, you can't contain it. That's why I love that song. Something has to break. Lord, something in our churches has to break. And then spirit, break out. Holy Spirit, would you change our hearts and convict us and set us free? We are done with dead church. We didn't come to play church. We came to experience the risen Savior and be changed and transformed by the inside out. Do you think the people, if all they do, all they do is listen to Joel Osteen, they're going to be ready for the persecution that is to come? I can tell you the answer right now. No, it's not always about positive thinking. Sometimes you got to get the church to humble themselves and repent at the altar and come and cry out to God and be challenged by the Word of God and be convicted by the Word of God and let the sword of the Spirit cut the heart and divide and show people their sins. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Why are we embarrassed? Why, why are preachers, why are preachers embarrassed to preach about the blood of Christ and the judgment of God? Why are they embarrassed to call people to repentance? Why are they embarrassed to talk about the foundation of the Christian faith? Because they're worried about nickels and noses. Do you realize that there, here's a truth? I'll just tell you the truth. If I were to tone things down quite a bit, many of you might not be here, but we'd have a mega church. I can be a motivational speaker. I can captivate the heart and talk about pleasant things. I was, I won't, don't worry. If I was gonna be a motivational speaker, that would have already happened. Mitch, I see you're here. You used to go come 10 years ago, right, when we first began. Has anything changed? Still the same call to repentance, the same call to holiness and to seek God because Jesus said it. He said, go and preach, whole, go and preach love. Disciples, go and preach that God is love. No, he said, go and preach repentance because the love of God compels us to share all of his truth. Thank God for the love of God. It is God's grace that has brought me here thus far, and it'll be grace that takes me home. I will preach the love of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God, but you also have to be warned that there is a judgment to come. God calls us to repentance. God calls us to brokenness. God calls us to humility. He says, I will save that which is broken. I will bind up the broken. I will strengthen the sick. I will lead those back to me. But the proud, the fat, the proud, the arrogant, I will, I will leave and I will bring to judgment, God says. I will judge the proud. I will judge the arrogant. And it's that call of holy fire, of righteous indignation. These things should break our heart. Why are the pulpits silent about sin? The very thing we need is the very thing we're running from. 
Do you know what the title is of the most famous sermon ever preached in America? The most famous sermon ever preached since 1620 to now. It it sparked revival in Massachusetts in north northern the United States. The most famous sermon, you can Google it if you don't believe me. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Now, I'm not sure I would choose that title. It might make it mm, a little bit more loving, but it's biblical truth because we've dumbed down who Jesus really is. He's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming back as a lion. A.W. Tozer said that makes me both love him and fear him. I love him because he's my savior, but I fear him because he is my judge. John doesn't give us this picture of a, of a, of a nice gentle breeze and a dove coming down. He said, I saw the Son of God coming with the angels and with the armies of heaven. Out of his eyes are flames of fire. On his head are many crowns. Out of his mouth goes a sword that he will judge the nations. He will rule the nations with the rod of iron. He will, he will tread the winepress and fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. That's who's coming. Jesus didn't say, I, I came to judge the world. When he came, he said, I came to save the world. I came as a savior, but I'm coming back as the judge. That's why there is two deaths. You die twice. Did you know that? Physical death and spiritual death. It's appointed man wants to die, and then after that, the judgment. Jesus spoke more about hell than heaven, and we have the audacity to dumb down the gospel. There are churches right over that hill that have told their worship leaders, don't sing about the blood of Christ. Don't talk about repentance and sin. People already feel bad enough. I would say they already feel too good about themselves. And they don't feel, they don't see how they really are between, before a righteous, holy God. But Shane, that's downright depressing. This is hell, fire, and brimstone. No, it's not. It's hope. Point them to the cross. Yes, the bad news is pretty bad, but the good news is glorious. Point them to the cross, the blood that was shed on Calvary, Golgotha, the pain of the cross. Jesus Christ emptied himself and he cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, where have you been? Where are you? Eli, Eli, lama zabachini, my God, my God, why have you departed from me? And I stayed on the cross to pay the penalty of sin and death for the people if they would just turn to me look to the lamb look to the cross and be saved that's how that's how we're going to change the world change our nation our nation they say has a a a a, a racial a racial problem america's racist and we got to teach critical race theory they are so far off it's not even funny it's not a skin problem it's a sin problem Get people right with God and you will fix everything else. You're going to bring curriculum into the schools that tells white kids they are bad and they are oppressors because of the color of their skin? My, my friends, that is racism. They're using racism to try to fix racism. No, we have a sin problem. Get all nationalities, all ethnicities. You don't know it, but I do. But sometimes there are correctional officers and felons on this altar. And I just laugh to God and say, if it wasn't for the grace of God, we would all be lost. And that's how you fix the problem. You get people back to the gospel. The old time preachers would preach. They would preach about the realities of heaven, but also the realities of hell. They would say, you are lost without the Son of God. And we, 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 we forget the importance of repentance. You need to know that prayer is a great fear quencher. The Bible says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all of my fears. Prayer is a great victory giver. This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Prayer will promote peace and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But the, the, one of the inc- most incredible 
aspects of prayer is the power of prayer to set people free and to save them. Did you know that people are set free and saved because they pray? They cry out in their heart. Joel, Romans, Acts, they all say the same thing. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord might be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord could be saved if God is in a good mood. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord might be saved if they follow this checklist first, if all their good works weigh their bad works. Does any of that sound right? Okay, good. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's the cry of the heart acknowledging everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In the book of Joel, tremendous amounts of locusts, swarming locusts, consuming locusts, devastated the whole land. And God said, don't worry, Joel, not only consecrate a fast and call a sacred assembly, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Paul's talking to the church in Rome. He says, remind people when you go out, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. In the book of Acts, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. The last book of the Bible, people are so worried about a revelation, but there's a scripture that leaps from the pages and whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God says, I'm just looking for a broken and contrite heart. The only reason why you will be separated from God for eternity is because of the pride of your heart. The pride of your heart has deceived you. Turn to God today. I am done. I am done. That is all I have to say. Praise God.